Hello and welcome to the Ministry of Bridges, your YouTube Bridges channel. My name is Gabriel Nevis and this is the Ministry of Bridges. Welcome to this lesson four of Bridge Creator tutorial. And this lesson four uh, in reality might be extended as lesson five and six. And it's all about editing cross sections. It's a most complex subject of Bridge Creator. And we're going to cover every single setting of the cross section editor. I hope you enjoy. The cross sections editor. And the first thing I want to show is the following. If I do read alignment, and if now I select all these lines, I need to pick the center line as reference. This is covered on the different episode. And now, as you can see, we don't have any key section. Let's add one key section. If I add one empty key section, and now if I'm going to edit, let's put here a different change. If I'm going to edit this key section, we have already the road lines there. All right. So this happens automatically when we add an empty section let's delete this one i'm going to add a sample which is this one so I'll do the same there and go to edit as you can see we don't have those road lines so in this case what we need to do we know that we have five i'm going to copy this four times and i will change here to the correct in order to have every single road line available to constrain our concrete points. Now I can start working on this. The same happens, I'll it again. If I add anything from the library, let's go here to this library. So it's a Dexlab A, where I used more than one road line. I'm going to bring this one from the library, do the same, and now edit. And in this case, you'll see the previous road lines are there, but they are wrong. So here we need to be more careful. And I know this one here, I can select from this viewer or here from the top. So here the ID. So the alignment minus two is a center line. Now I need to replace those lines. So I'll go here to this one. It will be left one. That one there, left two. Right one. And right two. Oi. And right two. And now I'll have my cross section already with the alignment, the lines uh, updated and ready to use. So three ways here. If you start from scratch, so again, if we delete that, if we start from empty section, every road line will be there automatically available in the very beginning. If you start from a sample with not enough road lines, you need to replace the center line and then add the other lines. If you go to any of these libraries and you bring any cross section with or without uh, the road lines, you need always to replace or add the road lines. As simple as that. Today, we are not going to, to use these road lines. I'm going just to, I created here some construction lines and then I transformed these as a bridge creator feature lines using the more uh, button that is covered on a different episode. So I don't need the road lines and I, I will work here all the examples for the key sections. Let's prepare the model and start with the key sections editor. So now we have this area. I'm going to start obviously with the, the basic. I have the alignment already loaded. I know where I want to use. So I'm going to use this first road line, just one line as a center line. And let's add one empty key section. I want the, the key station to start at chainage one or station one, one meter. And now I'm going to edit. So here we cover this on the different episode, but let's uh, do it again. Add from the library, edit, copy, the key sections, I can go do something and then copy and change in order to have uh, varying cross sections. We have the delete and the save. The save, you give a name first, test, and then you go to save. It's empty, you, know, you cannot save, but after you edit the, the key section, you can save into the library. We did that before. So let's now to edit this key section. Have we seen before the alarm and proxy line? It's already there. And now let's know a little bit more about this area of the edit cross section. 
here on the top right, we have the type of points. And in this case, we have four different types of points. The first ones are the alignment proxy. Those are read from the model or from a land XML file, and we're going to use it to constrain our uh, concrete objects. The virtual points are points that are very useful. They don't do anything. Uh, they are placed, uh, and then they can be constrained to something and then have something constrained to those virtual points. And then in the end, you change a virtual point instead of changing the concrete uh, point, in this case, will be the outer face point. Outer face point, as the name uh, shows, is for the outline of our cross section, could be a steel beam too. And the inner face point could be, in this case, inner face points are used to create voids. We only have one alignment proxy, and I go to place my 00, zero line. We could change the name here, ID 00, zero there. If you see now, let's type center line, enter, and now the ID changes. I don't see a big advantage, apart from sometimes the, the files or the lines you get, uh, they have very long names, and uh, you might want to reduce the, the length of the name of the file, and you can do that. So usually, I think with the, the road lines, they have the proper names, so you don't have the need to change that. So let's put it back at zero, 00 and keep working on this. Now I need outer face points. Select outer face points. I don't have any point as a starting, and I jump into the bottom hand right of the, the screen, and I'm going to give the constraint. It will be point zero, 00, and now I have DU and DV. U in road, the U in road uh, language is for the X plan and DV is for the Y plan. In bridges, you might think about X and Y. In roads, they think in U and V. If you get confused, you have here the, the diagram and you, you'll know uh, then always very quick that U is for the X and V is for the Y. I can now change the constraints. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just going to add that point. And now I have the outer face point there. So I can select the points there. You see these changes of so the road line. And now the green point is my outer face point. Let's change the constraint in Y, which is the DV with minus 100. And now this point is constrained to the road line. The road line can go up, down, left or right, and the point zero will follow. And in this case, it's constrained with the U, so in X, with zero. So it will be always without any deviation in X, but in V will be always 100 millimeters below the road line, even if the road line goes up or down. So now do I, do I, I do need more points in order to create here a deck. In this case, you have a couple of options. You can go back here, uh, give another constraint and add, or you just select the point there and copy the new point. It will be an exact copy and then you change the point that you copy. So let's try to do that way. Now I have the point one. And in this case, the point one and zero are in the same place. I select the point one and now I change the constraint. And in this case, the point is going to be constrained to the point zero. And you see, because the 100 was there, is below the point zero. I don't want that. I want zero there. And I want to go two meters to the right. And if you look at here, we have offset directions UV work plan. In this case, if for this example, we are using the XY plan or UV plan. So as a traditional CAD uh, work plan, XY. We are not yet playing with defined by point pairs or defined by rotation angles. So that, let's add more points. And I can do this doing the same thing. Select the last point, And now I'm going to give the constraint 1, 0 in U, and now minus 1 meter below. Another way you can do it is you don't need to have the zero point here in the center of your deck. Doesn't matter the number of the, uh, the point. So we can work backwards. So I'm going to select the point zero. I'm going to add another point. And I have the point zero and the point one on top of each other. And this is not very good. And I know my one, it will be in the center line. So I need to change my point zero. 
select the point zero, give the constraint the point one, zero here and minus one meter in order to go to the left. So now the zero is there, the one is the center line, doesn't matter. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing, select zero, add to another point, and now select the zero again and change the zero. Constraint to point one, zero in U and minus 1000. Something happened here, let's fix this. The point three should be constrained to point two. Let's put one meter to be like that. And now we are okay. Let's now add another point there. And for minus 100, let's put the positive there. If you have a situation like that, you just select the point you want to delete or change, and now you use here the delete button, and it's correct. Okay? We're using type 1. The next example will be the type 2 plus 2, but for now, this is very, very basic. The work plan is parallel to XY, and the point type is type 1. It's a normal point with a constraint in U or V, so X or Y, and you go to minus to go down, positive to go up, and for the DU, minus to go to the left, positive to go to the right uh, hand side. And the points can be constrained uh, the way you want. Let me show you the virtual point. Select the virtual point. I'm going to constrain to the zero, zero, and now I add that point. So now I have a virtual point that is constrained to that zero. And let's do here 150 and 150. So we go there. And if for some reason now, remember the virtual point zero is constrained to the center line. I now can change my center line point from the concrete outline that was constrained to the center line. I can change that to the virtual point. And I'll put zero. So again, if the road line goes up, down, left, and right, everything on this box will follow because it's constrained to the virtual point, and then the virtual point is constrained to the road line. If I change now the, con the, the virtual point, the concrete will follow. So in this case, you might think is not the best example, but you'll see down the line, you might want to use the, the virtual points. Uh, remember that if we delete some points and if there are constraints, you can have some uh, misbehaving here of this cross section, but then you can fix it. Let's do it, delete the virtual point. In, and now I need to change my constraint to the zero, zero. It was changed automatically. Sometimes that doesn't happen. You need then now and fix your uh, cross section. You can delete points, select more than one point and delete uh, if you need, or just delete or add points here in the middle. If you want to add a point, now I want to add one point between zero and four, I can select zero and add, or the four and add. Let's do that way, select the point four, add one more, and now I need to change point five, and I want the point five constrained to the point two and minus, two meters. Always go to the point before or after where you want to place the new point and then work from there. So try not to go to the five at the point and now this point six you want there between, I don't know, one and two. So you can do it, but now you need to go here and go up and start moving until that point is in the correct place and very easy. You can lose control of what you are doing. So it's much easier, let's put it back, it's much easier to, if I want a point here in the middle, I select the point one, add one point, and now I'm going to change the point two and say the point two is constrained to point one, uh, zero there, let's put 500 there and 200 there. And I need, this way it's much easier to add points. So you can create the first outline and start adding points then to complete your cross-section. So very basic stuff here with this table, selecting the points, you can see the coordinates uh, those points are, reference to the zero, zero plan. We have different point types, we'll cover points or radio uh, later, and then we have different offsets, so work plans and different po uh, 
type of points. Let's now delete. You can select, press delete, or you can select and press delete over there. And now delete. So let's undo Control Z and let's try to use this uh, cross section. And in this case, we have here the point five and six. They are in the same place. You're going to get an alert. Solve the problem before you say yes. You can say yes, but then the triangulation uh, is not going to be perfect. You don't want this to happen. There are some uh, examples, and I'll cover this um, th that example during the this uh, set of episodes. There are some cases where you want, for instance, uh, the first cross section with this triangle and the next cross section without the triangle. So you might want to put that point over there and uh, one section will have two points on top of each other, the other section um, will not. But in this case, it's a simple section, uh, don't do that. So press no and now delete the point that is wrong. And now if you say okay, there are no errors and we have the station start end, we can preview, you see it's going to happen there and now we can create. This is our first uh, object constrained to this center line and using the simple uh, method. Another thing I want to show is let's save. If now I open Bridge Creator again, and when you have as the model I'm using is the Bridge Creator Demo 3 that is shared when you download Bridge Creator from Tecla Warehouse, you have already many, many examples already um, using Bridge Creator. So select, edit, and let's do here something and maybe use um, this cross section to show point or radius, right? So let's go to the point three, change that to radius. This is going to happen temporarily until you give values over there. And let's give a value there of 50, enter. Arc chamfer cannot happen with 50. Let's write the round chamfer. And now I have the round chamfer. Let's try something different. Tangent arc chamfer, which will extend the two lines until you apply that arc chamfer and the extending with the tangent is 50, still 50. Line chamfer, you'll need two values. Now I have that. Let's do one different from the other. So the vertical distance 150. The horizontal one 50 then we have square chamfer the same thing there horizontal 150 vertical 50 square parallel chamfer which it will be the same in this case the round chamfer we have seen that but now is 100 press ok save the file select the object because we're going to modify this object already exists you could create, and Teclastrux is going to try to replace uh, the object, but the object will have the shape name exactly the same. Just in case, when you're going to modify the object, select the object, keep the object selected. Just need to do that once. We're working on that, the object is selected, and now you press create, which will be modify. Teclastrux will replace this object, but will not change the attributes. And show me, let me show you that. I change the class to the number two. Object is selected. And now I'm going to create again. And you'll see the object is updated, but the attribute didn't, didn't change. It's still class uh, red. In this case, class two, sorry. I hope this episode was useful and stay tuned for the lesson five, as I'm going to continue to explaining the cross-section editor. I appreciate if you leave a comment, like and support your Ministry of Bridges channel by clicking the subscribe button. It's all for now, Bridge Modelers. See you in the next episode and have a Bridge Creator Day.